Good morning, everyone. Uh, before I make my announcement regarding our pressure campaign against the Islamic Republic of Iran, I, I want to address yesterday's terrorist attack in uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, what was supposed to be a joyful Easter Sunday was marred by a horrific wave of Islamic radical terror uh, bloodshed. It's heartbreaking that a country which has strived so hard for peace in recent years uh, has been targeted by these terrorists. Uh, we mourn the loved ones of the victims, some of whom we can confirm were indeed U.S. citizens. This is America's fight, too. I spoke with the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka this morning, and our embassy and other parts of the U.S. government are offering all possible assistance to Americans and the Sri Lankan government alike. We urge that any evildoers uh, be brought to justice expeditiously, and America is prepared to support that. Uh, we also stand with the millions of Sri Lankans who support the freedom of their fellow citizens to worship as they please. We take confidence in knowing that e not even atrocities like this one will deter them from respecting religious freedom. Today our nation grieves with the people of Sri Lanka, and we stand uh, committed, resolved to confront terrorism together. Now turning to uh, Iran. <coughs> Uh, almost one year ago, after withdrawing from the Iran nuclear deal, President Trump implemented the strongest pressure campaign in history against the Islamic Republic of Iran. The goal remains simple, to deprive the outlaw regime of the funds it has used to destabilize the Middle East for four decades and incentivize Iran to behave like a normal country. Up to 40 percent of the regime's revenue comes from oil sales. It's the regime's number one source of cash. Before our sanctions went into effect, Iran would generate as much as $50 billion annually in oil revenue. Overall, to date, we estimate that our sanctions have denied the regime well north of $10 billion. The regime would have used that money to support terror groups like Hamas and Hezbollah and continue its uh, missile development in defiance of UN Security Council Resolution 2231. And it would have perpetuated the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. Our goal has been to get countries to cease importing Iranian oil entirely. Last November, we granted exemptions from our sanctions to seven countries and to Taiwan. With this is to give our allies and partners to wean themselves off of Iranian oil and to assure a well-supplied oil market. Today, I'm announcing that we will no longer grant any exemptions. We're going to zero, going to zero across the board. We will continue to enforce sanctions and monitor compliance. Any nation or entity interacting with Iran should do its diligence and err on the side of caution. The risks are simply not going to be worth the benefits. I, I want to emphasize that we have used the highest possible care in our decision to ensure market stability. The United States has been in constant discussions with allies and partners to help them transition away from Iranian crude to other alternatives. And we have been working with uh, major oil producing countries to ensure the market has sufficient volume to minimize uh, the impact on pricing. Both the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have assured us they will ensure an appropriate supply for the markets. And of course, the United States is now a significant producer as well. I can confirm that uh, uh, each of those suppliers are working directly with Iran's former customers to make the transition away from Iranian crude less disruptive. And uh, as I said, we're doing our part here in the United States, too. In 2018, uh, crude production increased by 1.6 million barrels per day over the 2017 levels. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. Energy Information Agency predicts an increase of an additional 1.5 million barrels per day in calendar year 2019. Look, with the announcement today, we've made clear our seriousness uh, of purpose. We are going to zero. We, how long we remain there at zero? depends solely on the Islamic Republic of Iran's senior leaders. We've made our demands very clear to the Ayatollah and his cronies. End your pursuit of nuclear weapons. Stop testing and proliferating ballistic missiles. Stop sponsoring and committing terrorism. Halt the arbitrary detention of U.S. citizens. Our pressure is aimed at fulfilling these demands and others, and it will continue to accelerate until Iran is willing to address them at the negotiating table. Finally, as I've said before, these demands are not just coming from the United States government and many of our allies and partners. They are similar to what we hear from the Iranian people themselves. I want the Iranian people to know that we are listening to them and standing with them. We will not appease their oppressors, 
as the last administration did. Our hopes are for a better life for them and all people afflicted by the regime's violence and destruction. I will now take a few questions. Matt. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Um, I just, uh, broadly on Iran, uh, aside from this, it, your goal, you just said bring them back to the negotiating table, but it, are you really interested in uh, renegotiating the JCPOA or negotiating something like that, or are you just looking for, are the, all these steps that you're taking look, uh, aimed at just getting them to change their behavior without getting anything in return? And then secondly, if you could just address a report about comments you allegedly made to Iranian um, diaspora leaders last week in, in, in Texas. What, what are the comments what, in particular? That, that, that um, the, you're not interested in any kind of military intervention, that it's basically ep economic diplomatic pressure, and that, uh, and some, uh, I don't know, some, some kind of comment about the MEK, and you're, you're not. Yeah, let me, uh, Matt, thank you. Let me try and take those. I'll take them in reverse, in reverse sequence. We've not supported any outside group. <laughs> Uh, for, we've, we're supporting the Iranian people. Uh, and so uh, I get questions all the time about uh, outside Iranian groups, including the MEK. Uh, and I want, I, every time I engage with anyone, and this was a meeting with uh, folks who have family, of, often had family inside of Iran, I want to make clear to them we're supporting the Iranian people and not any particular group. Uh, that's the uh, U.S. administration's policy. Second, uh, with respect to our objectives, uh, we're happy to receive the, uh, we're, we're happy to get the outcome however we can achieve it. Uh, the President has always made very clear, we've made clear to the Iran's leaders that if Americans are attacked, we will respond in a serious way. Uh, and so I don't think there should be any doubt about the fact that if uh, it is required for us to take an action in response to something that uh, Qasem Soleimani does or the Iranian leadership or a Shia militia somewhere in the world, that we will respond to that in a way uh, that is appropriate to protect American interests wherever we find them. Uh, with respect to our goal, we, we laid them out. We laid them out. There are 12 things we're looking for. Uh, when we get to those things, we are happy to re-engage with Iran as a normal nation. If they're prepared to come to the table and negotiate those things to get to that outcome, fantastic. If not, the campaign with which we've been engaged uh, since, frankly, the administration took office, but more clearly since the President's decision to withdraw from the JCPOA, uh, the campaign will continue. And we built that enormous coalition to work on this, right? Gulf state partners, uh, Israel, lots of countries that are working alongside us to achieve these objectives. You see the Europeans with increasing risk from the assassination campaign that's taking place inside of their country. We watch as Iran continues to try and have um, a role in protecting Maduro in Venezuela. This is, this is causing countries in South America to understand that the expeditionary nature of the Islamic Republic is something that threatens uh, citizens all across the world. And so uh, this is not the United States alone. It's a, a true coalition uh, working to achieve the ends which we've laid out. Thank you. Matthew. Thank you, ma'am. Um, good morning, Mr. Secretary. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. <clears throat> With the maximum pressure campaign, um, have you detected any change in the Iranian behavior? With the few exceptions that you mentioned, I think, before, which is uh, short of cash of to Hezbollah and maybe to not giving all to the Syrian regime. Mm -hmm. And also talking about senior leadership, do you have any comment about the appointment of the new leader of the uh, IRGC? Uh, I think his name is Mr. Sure. Yeah. Hussein Salami. Yes. Uh, because he's been praised as a hard, hardliner anti-U.S. Um, so... We, we have watched Iran have diminished power as a result of our campaign. Their capacity to wreak harm around the world is absolutely clearly diminished. I talked about it with respect to Hezbollah not being able to make payroll in a timely fashion. I've talked about it in other, in other places as well. Uh, what we're announcing this morning, the designation of the IRGC a couple of weeks back, actions that we'll take in a handful of weeks, each of these things will continue uh, to support the Iranian people so that they can get what they ultimately uh, are so desperately seeking. Uh, I don't have any comment on the new appointment of the IRGC, other than, uh, IRGC leader. Other than this, uh, you, you described him as a hardliner. It, it, is, it, it is the case that every Iranian leader, that includes President Rouhani and Foreign Minister Zarif, has accepted the notion, has accepted this fundamental notion of the nature of the regime itself. Right, so th they accept that the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, is the appropriate method for which Iran to engage. When, when, once they've conceded that, in our view, 
th these distinctions are often are, are often insignificant. That is, if you are pushing and you're supporting Qasem Soleimani's efforts in Iraq, if you're supporting the efforts of the RZ Quds Force in Hezbollah, and you're supporting the underwriting of Hamas, by definition, that is working against what America has laid out as our objective. Thank you, sir. Take one more morning. Yeah. morning. Hello. Morning. How are you, Mr. Secretary? I'm very good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Secretary, I want to ask you about the timing of your announcement. Um, oil supplies are pretty tight, given that a lot of oils come off, uh, Venez uh, from, off Venezuela as well. Um, what are your discussions? Um, China said today that, you, that the U.S. had reached beyond its jurisdiction. What, if your, what assurances do you have from Saudi Arabia, the UAE, to, to um, uh, supply the market in a timely fashion? Mm -hmm. um, and second, do you believe that, uh, I think it's the five largest importers of, of Iranian oil, um, will abide by what, what you're asking of them? With respect to your second question, um, it, we've made clear, it, if you don't abide by this, there'll be sanctions. Right? This, is, this is what we're laying out this morning. We, we have a uh, requirement uh, and to conduct these transactions, one almost always needs to participate in the financial markets, and we intend to enforce the sanctions. We don't lay out sanctions that we don't have any intention of uh, encouraging countries to cooperate with. With respect to, I'll, I'll leave to, uh, others to talk about the details of what the Saudis and the Emiratis have agreed to, but I've had conversations, the President has had conversations uh, with these countries, and they, they have committed to making sure that there is a sufficient supply in the markets. Uh, and, and I'm confident that we'll achieve that. I'm confident that they'll support uh, the, this policy that is consistent with their objectives as well. One more? Take one more? Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Thank you, you sir. Very quickly, What's that? you could stay all day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, sir. Got to get to Easter egg roll. <laughs> so you said that you, you, you are at zero uh, level today. Is that, is that effective today? Or did it's, they May, have it's May 2nd. They, the current, May, May the current waivers expire uh, uh, in, okay. in, on, on May, so, midnight May 1st, I think So it is. they're not getting like any grace period beyond May 2nd. There are no, there All are, must stop. There are, no, there are no SRE waivers that extend beyond uh, that period, and, full, full stop. So in, in the interim, they need to look at other sources like That's to right. make up for what Look, we've, 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 we've always tried, and I, I think we've always been very fair about this. If there's a particular transaction that is incidental act, right? So I don't want to foreclose the possibility, but there will be no waivers that extend beyond uh, the 1st of May. Yes, Great. Th thank you all. Thank you all very much. Sir? Yes, sure. Uh, do you think the incident there says anything about the dangers ISIS continues to pose now that uh, the, they've been defeated on the battleground? Yes, radical Islamist terror remains a threat. The president's been very clear about that. I think I've been very clear about that. Uh, we are continuing to do uh, real work against uh, these uh, these evil human beings that went into places of worship on Easter Sunday. Uh, yeah, the, we, we've, we've taken that threat down substantially. The destruction of the caliphate was important and it mattered, and the, just, and the takedown of these threats from other geographies as well. Um, but sadly, this evil exists in the world, and uh, the United States and all of its partners that are cooperating in the de-ISIS campaign, some 80 countries, uh, and uh, other nations, too, that are, that are assisting us uh, in defeating this terrorism around the world, uh, we have to remain active and vigilant, and uh, it's going to require uh, attention. There's, there's no doubt about that. Well, so thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a